Okay, so in giving of the rating system of between 0 to 10, mm. now this way we can get to rate how our year was previously mm-hmm. and how we can improve on into the current year. Exactly, because you're saying how satisfied are you with how you have done in these areas, mm. in this past year, for instance. So you'll pick, mm-hmm, this is how satisfied I am. And you'll realize that there's a lot of imbalance, possibly. If your balance, praise the Lord. But sometimes there is a lot of imbalance. And you see, okay, that is how your year has been. And so then the questions you ask yourself is, what do I have to do differently now for me to feel more satisfied in this area? Or what needs to happen for me to feel satisfied when it comes to maybe my relationship with my spouse? What needs to happen? Okay, maybe we need to laugh more. Maybe we need to travel together more. Maybe we need to do this and that together more. That is what needs to happen. Okay? So that helps me to know that then my relationship with my wife or my husband will be okay. I'll be more satisfied with that. You see, this is a personal thing. I'll be more satisfied when those and those things happen. So then I'll ask myself, what am I going to be able to do for all those things to happen? Now, that helps me to set goals now. Because if I have to be with my wife more, then that means I have to set time. Maybe every week I need to create this amount of time so that it specifically it is time I need to spend with my spouse so that I'm not waiting for those spontaneous accidental moments because then that is left to chance. But you see, when I'm already saying, okay, every day or every week I will be able to set up this kind of time or every day I will have to set this time now, you could do that maybe say every morning before I leave home. I need to do this. I need to spend this with my wife or spend this time together. Or every evening before we retire to bed, we need just time for ourselves. You know, when I say that, it may sound funny to somebody who is not married. Because you'd imagine, but you people stay in the same room. You spend a night together. What do you mean by setting time together? Yeah. You see, if I go to home at midnight, what is likely to happen? I'll have found my wife asleep. So, is it really fair to say that you spend time together? No, it is Exactly. So, that is why now I'm saying spending time together. So, that means that I may have to be home early and make sure we have time together so that even if I'm left doing some extra work I needed to do or maybe she has something she needed to do, uh, any of us can go to bed when we are free to go to bed. We don't have to say, okay, now let's time go, let's go to bed. No, that may not have to happen. Anybody can walk to bed at their own time, but at least we have hard time together. together. Or I can leave in the morning, we have hard time together, both of us are awake, we engage, and then if maybe one of us is still left sleeping or we have to live together, but at least we have that. So that has to be deliberate. In time to improve and be more satisfied with my relationship with my spouse. I will now have to work at those things. Now, those are daily things. Those are weekly things which will add up to the end of the year. It will not be automatic. It is something that you have to deliberately work at. Now, if it is with social, with friends, you have to set up time. Now, maybe you meet at these people who go for clubs. You know, they know oh, every Friday, maybe there's a club day, so they meet or every Wednesday, or whatever. I've had some people announcing, for like when you're talking about people need to go for dancing and you know those things. So people choose, that is the time they'll meet with friends. So let's meet and dance. And so they'll meet and dance. So they're spending time with their friends as they dance, they chat, they drink, or they talk, or they take something together, even if they're not necessarily taking alcohol or something. Mm-hmm. Now, they will do that regularly. Now, even if it's not weekly, maybe every fortnight or every month or every this so often, that will happen. Then you are building on that aspect. Now, if it is something to do with, uh, let's say, spirituality. Yes. Now, again, that doesn't mean church. Now, spirituality is not church or mosque, but it is how we connect with the spiritual being. But you see now, for how we connect with the spiritual being, there are a variety of disciplines that you may need to include. When For me as a Christian, we talk about the spiritual disciplines. Now that may have to do with the time I read the Bible, because that's the word of God that instructs me. Time I spend in fellowship with other believers. Time I am engaging in uh, 
maybe in worship, either alone or with other believers, you know, those kind of things. Time I maybe retreat to do to a fast or something. Yes. All that I'm doing, all those things, because I'm developing and I'm working on my spirituality so that I'm able to connect with my God in a manner that I feel, mm-hmm, yeah, I'm doing well. So I need to check mm-hmm. how have I done in this past year yes. in that aspect, in trying to just those components. And I realized, well, I think I only fasted once. Oh, yeah, that was not really so good. Maybe I should have done more. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, maybe I just did a retreat once. Oh, maybe I should, or twice. Maybe I should do more than that. Because every time I did those fastings or retreats, this is how much it does for me in terms of how I feel spiritually. So I know I can now break that down. So well, I could be able to try this, this and that. So maybe I break that again into a monthly period. So well, maybe every month I need to set up a time just to fast or I need to set up time. Maybe just to be, to be in solitude, to be alone and just reflect and meditate. You know, all those kind of things. Or on a daily basis, I can choose. Mm-hmm. Maybe... You see, for those of us who are fortunate, maybe you drive, you can say, well, maybe you can put some music in your car that will just help you to align your mind, other than listening to some of these FM things that really waste our day. So those are the kind of things that must be deliberate. Yeah. So that helps me in that kind of a situation. Think of uh, maybe my physical health. Now, that's why you talk about maybe gymming. Not all of us can go to a gym. But I could choose maybe to just walk maybe every so many days in a week or they normally say about three days in a week if you can do brisk walking or even do those gym physical exercises healthy. Now that you can do in a variety of ways. You can do those things even in your own home. Yeah, you can skip a rope, you can have some weights, you can some dumbbells, you can do something that will make you sweat, will make you, you know, just feel you've done something. So you don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to go to a field. But if you have to, that's still good because different exercises help different parts of our bodies. So again, that's an area. Now think of career. Now there are specific things that you know need to happen. Think of academics if one is a student. You need there are things. If it's a business you're doing, what are those things you need to do differently? So when you have reviewed where you are now based on how the year has been, just on this little wheel, it can now help you to project what are the things that need to happen differently so that you can be more balanced in your life. Mm. And if you're more balanced in your life in these different areas, you will be achieving what you want to achieve. Yes. Exactly. Yes. You see, in those small, small things, you'll actually be achieving what you want to achieve at the end of the day. And, and that, for me, I think is doable. And uh, even as you begin the year in that way, then you can be able to be... It gets more real to you to see, oh, this is how I'm doing or this is how I'm not doing. You see, you talk about mental health, you're not know, thinking of our predisposition to very stressful situations. How are we handling some of that? When you learn coping styles or just how do you cope with stressful situations? Mm -hmm. What do you do? There are things that potentially will bring stress. So if you know they are coming, you can handle that from a preventive place. What do I need to do so that when I get to that time, for example, for students, if you read last minute, you'll be very stressed. Yes, Yes. But since you know exams will be coming at this time, if you start preparing earlier, by the time the exam moment comes, you may not be as stressed. You know, there's a bit that I left out here. Maybe it should be on financial. Okay? Yes. How am I doing with my finances? That's another segment. Because again, that on its own, it's easier to reflect on it. Then you're like, hmm, there are things that you need to do. If you plan ahead, then that helps you to be preventive in that. But even when things go the way you don't expect, how do you handle that? Because, again, how we handle conflicts, how we handle things that we didn't expect, can actually determine how we are going to succeed or how we are not going to succeed. Because some of us overreact in situations. There are certain things that actually you can just let them pass. And they will pass. And you will move on. But there are people who, a little thing, they must attend to it with all their muscles and energy. And yet it is something that doesn't require so much energy. Sometimes you have a very troublesome neighbor. Now, some you may just need to let it pass. Yeah, and it will just pass. You just develop a way to stay calm and handle your own things without bothering. But others feel like, no, 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 the neighbor must know. Know what? There are some things that they don't need to know. And you'll still be very, very happy and carry on with your life in a very, very successful. So, so for me, I think this is a good place to begin. 